Yahweh International. New Foundation Production presents. It's your boy Keith in the Food for Thought Project, and I'm so proud. And it's what a privilege to have the legendary, Grammy nominated, and soon to be Grammy winner when this new album comes out. And an amazing book we're going to talk about, Mr. Pete Escovito. Pops, what's yeah, up? Yeah, good to be here. Man, My pleasure. I'm excited. Um, there's no words to even explain the, just the level of influence in music that you've had over the years. And just to sit with you and talk, man, um, uh, it's a privilege, Pops. Ah, uh, thank you. Well, it's been a wonderful journey, man. I, uh, you know, started out as a young kid, didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> Luckily, God gave me the gift of music, mm -hmm. and here I am, yeah. 82 years young. 82, look at 35. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pops, tell me about that. How did you come into music? I mean, definitely, we, we've talked about the early days, so let our viewers know, like, before you were into music, what your life was like. Yeah, well... Um, you know, as as I wrote in the book, uh, in my memoir, it's it it sort of came to pass because uh, I come from a broken home, and uh, most of our family we were all separated in different places and stuff like that. So uh, I was searching for something. I mean, I didn't know what it was going to be because I knew that at some point I had to change my life, turn my life around. I didn't want to end up as an illicit statistic in a foster home or anything like that. So I said, well, you know, um, let, me, let me start searching. What am I going to do? You know, of course, I love art and I love painting. And I started that first. Oh, I didn't know that was first. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was that was first. And I was actually destined to go to a College of Arts and Crafts in Oakland. I had a scholarship, I had a job waiting for me when I got out of school. Wow. But during my time there in high school, um, I was lucky enough to meet my friend Ed Kelly, who was uh, a great jazz piano player. Even as young as he was in our school days, we were in high school, but he was such an incredible musician. And um, he actually was starting a little band, and uh, I started in a sense, fooling around with the saxophone. And I thought, well, what better way to get better and play better music is to get in with a band. Mm -hmm. So I approached him and said, you know, I heard uh, you're starting a band. I, I play saxophone. So I'd like to audition for the band. He goes, well, I've already got a saxophone player. Mm -hmm. He goes, but I've been listening to a lot of Latin jazz and uh, I want to add percussion into my group. Mm. So right away, I wanted the player said, "Hey, I can do that." So, <laughs> <laughs> so sax was your first instrument ever? Yes. No yes. way. See, yeah. I, I'm learning stuff right now. You guys, I didn't even know that. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I was in a sense just beating on stuff. I, I made a little uh, home kind of drum set for me, <laughs> bongo set out of some coffee cans, I used to hit those cans, and um, my mom would always tell me, cut out all that noise, <laughs> go get a job. Get a job. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, that turned into uh, joining the group, and so we were very fortunate because this was a time when the schools were let high school kids open for a major act, oh. and the major act was the Count Basie Orchestra. Oh, wow. And we were chosen as the small group to open for that that orchestra at a club called the Downby Club of San Francisco. So we went there. This is my very first ever time mm -hmm. in a nightclub. Wow. How were you then? Yeah, I was, you know, 16 or right, something right. like that. Yeah. <laughs> and so we played, and just the vibe of the club, the audience, the applause, just the whole thing, hanging backstage with all these great musicians and just being in that whole scene was like, I said, this must be heaven because this is it. <laughs> this is it. This is it. I got to do this. I want to be a musician. Mm -hmm. That started it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, when, when I think about 
we talk about how music really changed our lives, like really saved us, if anything. Yeah. Definitely, in my case, we've, we've talked about that and just how it, how you came into it. I mean, I've just learned just extra tidbits, just what you shared there. What, what artist really impacted you the most way? Like, wow, it just really kind of just set you on a course. Mm -hmm. Well, um, at an early age, you know, actually, I, I kind of get this from my dad, too, because my dad really loved music. And and he used to go listen to the big bands. And the, mm -hmm. You know, those, those days they had big ballrooms where orchestras would play. And so we would sit outside in the car while he went inside because <laughs> we weren't allowed to go in, right. in the ball. Y'all sit in the car while I go yeah. in this band. <laughs> and we would just listen to all this big band music, which really stuck in my mind. And then uh, because me and my brothers, we started out, you know, as young guys, you know, just wanting to play music. Mm. And we really liked the Latin jazz kind of a thing. So, of course, we listened to R&B also, different kinds of music, but, mm. but the Latin jazz thing was the thing that we really embraced more than any other styles of music. Mm. And so whenever bands came into town from New York or even bands that were local in the Bay Area, we would always go, go and hear them play mm. so we could hear what they were doing and watch and learn if they had percussion players. Mm. And so I was just 18 when we, me and my brother Coke went to see Tito Puente mm. at this club in San Francisco. And I mean, instantly we became friends. Yeah. We went backstage, he embraced us like, you know, really took a liking to us. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we were young guys, just he could tell we really wanted to play and that we loved the music. And so I think he was the one mainly responsible for Coke and I actually playing that same instrument, instrument of Tim mm. and kind of uh, making him the guy we wanted to be, you know. Yeah, that's a and that's a big order. Yeah, <laughs> you, you picked the yeah. serious person to follow, right? right there. Yeah, we sure did. Yeah. yeah, and it's funny you said you were eighteen, and just through the years, I, the the many pictures I've seen of you guys together mm -hmm. really shows me like the lineage. If you were eighteen then, and just of all the pictures I've seen, like that's amazing how one person, yeah, yeah, impact in this through the years, mm -hmm. he, he got to watch you grow yes, into this yeah. legendary musician. Unbelievable, because that yeah. you know, everybody doesn't yeah. get to experience that. Yeah, and the chance that we got to play together, mm -hmm. write music together. Yeah. And, I mean, whoever thought? I mean, I had no idea that it yeah. would go to that extreme. At eighteen, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> we'll so be was, playing with this guy over here. Yeah, so it was a, a great, great experience mm -hmm. meeting him and being a part of his yeah. uh, friendship and family because we both know each other's family, even. Mm -hmm. He took Sheila under his wing also and and uh, just said, hey, I'm adopting you. You're my godchild. You know, yeah. so, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so uh, it was really cool. So as you progress in your music and start playing with other big artists, who are some of the people you played with, which most people do know, but just to hear, because at this point, I'm not <laughs> shocked at anything that Pops is about to say because, <laughs> but one, I got to read the book. But two, just right now, I'm learning so much that I didn't know. So who are some of the people that you were playing with, which now, you know? Well, at a young age, I was very fortunate uh, to play with uh, Carlos Federico, who was a great Latin piano player from Panama. Uh, he had a lot to do with my um, growing up in, into the business because I was very young when I started playing with him, and I learned a lot from him. And then, you know, it's sort of like anything that you do to try to get ahead. It's like you take one step at a time, you, you go up the ladder, and, and, and what you have to do to that is you've got to play with better players and better players mm. and better players. And so that's what makes you a better player. Right. So I was very fortunate that I started playing with great people, such as, you know, I played with Tito, of course, I played with Mongo Santa Maria, I played with Cal Jader, I played with Willie Bobo, I played with uh, Woody Herman, I played with um, so many. Billy Cobham was a very, very big influence on 
on me and Sheila also. And there's just so many musicians that I've had the pleasure of playing with Herbie Hancock, George Duke. Um, you know, the list goes on, the yeah. list goes on. Yeah. But uh, it's great because each time I played in different bands was a learning experience for me because even though some of them weren't Latin jazz artists, like I, I played with Anita Baker. Right. I, yeah, and I played with Stephen Stills, went on the road with Stephen Stills. And these kind of bands uh, were different. Of course, playing in the rock band with Santana for four years was another thing that was different for me. So each time was a learning experience and that kind of just widened my whole spectrum right. of what Latin music mm. could, could be. be. Yeah. yeah, and how I could incorporate a lot of different styles of music into what I do. And I think that's that's my signature thing as what it is today because I think when people hear my music, you, oh, they could say, yeah, well, that's Peter Escovito because, you know, what, what I've done by the mixture of mixing uh, all, all kinds of, yeah, yeah. of of music mm -hmm. into one certain style is is been been my uh, you know signature right kind of thing so. yeah yeah because I remember I think I was 19 or 20 at that time and I started going to the shows with you guys and I started seeing what, exactly what you're talking about I was mm -hmm. new into music but that watching you use different styles in your music i remember like wow i didn't even know that was possible at the time yeah you know i was yeah. new to latin jazz i was i just i was new to the bay and uh just watching you and it completely changed how i did music you know because mm -hmm. as, as a rapper you don't right. think you don't think broad like that exactly you know yeah. so but then when you're a rapper and you're sitting on the side of the stage and you're watching somebody perform the next thing you know you're rapping to a rhythm that you normally don't rap to mm -hmm. and before mm -hmm. you know i end up doing the food for thought project and yeah spin, you just it starts sitting in you and it brought me out, you know, as a as a producer, as an artist, because just watching you play. Yeah. So when we start talking about the kids, you mm -hmm. know, um, yeah. who was first? Like, who picked it up first? <laughs> well, of course it was Sheila. She's the oldest mm. uh, of the family, and she actually was, you know, I could tell at a real early age. She was five, six years old. Mm. I could tell right away she was going to be something because she already had that rhythm in her. I always kept my drums in the in the front room, mm -hmm. and as soon as she was tall enough to hit the drum or stand on a chair and hit the drum, mm -hmm. uh, I could tell that she had something in her, you know. And uh, so she has progressed unbelievable. I mean, she has become a great, great musician, a great artist, uh, recording videos, everything. She yeah. does everything. And uh, I'm so proud of what she's accomplished and where she is now. And of course, my two sons, Juan and Peter Michael, they were more like, mainly, when they were younger, they were into sports because they were the boys. They were into yeah. the sports thing. Yeah. But You wouldn't because, have known it by the way they play now. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, here's the thing is that... Um, when me and my brothers had the band, we would rehearse at my house, so mm -hmm. in the front room. Mm -hmm. And the kids were very young. But instead of going out and playing in the street, mm -hmm. they were sitting down listening to us play, oh, watching okay. us yeah. rehearse at my house. Mm -hmm. So to me, like a duck takes the water, that's what happened to mm -hmm. them. They just soaked all this music mm -hmm. in. And before you know it, they were they were playing. And right. I, you know, I would so surprised how they progressed right away. They're so and competitive too. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. They're because the, they they the, each want to be better than they're the They're the most competitive. <laughs> it, no matter what it is, we're outside yeah. shooting hoops. Those three are so competitive. It's they just sure are. Yeah, they sure are. They always been that way and mm. they still are that way. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a good thing because it keeps them on their toes and, and, and it keeps them always always learning, always trying to do better. Yeah. And so um, with having them as musicians has been probably the most rewarding thing for me because we get a chance to play together. And when we do, it's just, it's just magic. It's just mm -hmm. so great that yeah. we can play together, uh, play music together. We have such a great time. Mm -hmm. And it's always 
to the audience that I think they really like seeing a family uh, of percussion that play together and and then we joke around and we you know we dog each other sometimes too. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I've been around that <laughs> capping on each yeah, other. That right. area swag is there. Yeah, there sure. you go, there you go. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's you know the, all the kids are just they're amazing. Yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. And and it's funny because people don't realize during that period of time how much Bay Area. The, the influence the Bay Area musically has had on you and, and me as well. How much music was really on fire? Um, the Bay Area was yeah. just doing it at yeah. that time too. So, well, when you're brought up in that kind of environment, because you've had bands there that were so many of the bands and all kind of different styles of music, from the Grateful Dead, yeah. Santana to Beautiful Day, to I mean. Slide, you name it. Stone, yeah. funk, everything yeah, was happening. Funk, jazz, Tower of Power, mm. I mean, uh, what was Fly nice? Stone, yeah. I mean, come <laughs> on, they all those, they all came from the Bay yeah. Area, and so it was so widespread. And the cool thing about that, too, is that, you know, because we were all there, it was a very tight-knit community of mm. musicians, because we all, we all knew each other, we all knew what we were doing. Who was playing what? Who was in what band? Yeah. Who could play this? Who could play that? <laughs> yeah, you know, so we were, you know, and, and that's what happens when you grow up in that kind of a scene. Yeah. You actually, at some time or another, you're going to play with some little right. guys. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to yeah, happen. it's going to happen. <laughs> and that's what's been so cool over the years is that some of the guys that, you know, lived in the Bay Area, Bay Area that I've met years and years ago mm. are still... Playing in my band, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. Although they do other things too, but, right, right. You know, and people come and go. You know, they go on tours mm -hmm. with other people. Mm -hmm. They record with other people. Mm -hmm. But we're still that that that's real knit family yeah. is still there. That's the Bay Area. That is, is the really Bay cool. Area. And yeah. it's funny because people don't realize, as a rapper coming up in the Bay Area, you know, doing the Hammer Time and you, yeah. some of the R&B in vogue and. Um, some of these Richie Rich and some of these other rappers, but the you know what people don't realize, pops your influence is so broad. There is nobody in any genre don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. Let alone if it's mm -hmm. Tony, 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 Dwayne, the Wiggins, yeah. and all them guys. Yeah. If it's if it's if rappers, everybody has been influenced by your music and stuff. And I think a lot of times that's what rappers are missing nowadays. A lot of these rappers, um, there is no influence for them. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. you figure in my genre, there were a couple of things that we had to do. We had to watch real artists play. Mm -hmm. So that told us that we had to know how to play. We physically, there were no, yeah. it's not like it is now. Everything's so technical. You don't have to know anything now, but you had to go, like band was important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> learning how to play was important. Yes. And learning more than one instrument, you know, drums, keys. You had to know how to really do it. So being a rapper and being multi you know, versed in a, little, a lot of things had a lot to do with who we were watching mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you look at that, and it's amazing because you see the diversity in the kids. Sheila, yeah. um, Peter Michael, Juan, they're, who, they play with everybody as well. It just, That's true. It just yeah. keeps going. Yeah, and, and it, it's really helpful that, you know, they were able to understand uh, what it takes to play in different bands. And, style of playing in different bands because every every band has their own style and they do their kind of music so you have to adapt to that you know and and that's what you know i'm so proud of them because they can go out and play with anybody right and right. do a great job right and uh we say oh yeah that was that was peter michael well that was one and that mm -hmm. was sheila yeah because they they can fit in you yeah. know they can fit in really good and so it really helps and i think that would help a lot of rappers in a sense is to to get as much knowledge of other music, not just rapping all the time, but learn the other stuff also. Mm -hmm. Listen to listen to some of the old timers, man. Gotta do it. Those cats have been around for so long. I mean, you're gonna hear styles of rap w way back in the bebop era yes in the 40s yes you think a guy like cab calloway right right <laughs> had an he was rapping but he they, they didn't call it rap, <laughs> yeah. but you know what i mean yeah but he was rapping a long time ago yeah. you know and you get guys that that talk that stuff that mm. talk and sing like james brown yeah. but he had that 
he had that funk thing going, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, yeah, I'm black and I'm proud. I mean, you know, that it was like, right in the groove. Yeah, absolutely. and that's, that's like rapping, too. It is, I mean, absolutely. You know, but, that's why they sampled them. That's yeah, why they sampled exactly, those guys so much. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, um, it, it, that is the lesson that I hope young people take from this interview. Anybody that hears this interview takes this part, that part of what he just said, that you got to diversify your music. Uh, jazz is the best format I've ever heard because the freedom in jazz mm -hmm. forces you to be outside the box. The, the chord progressions and the things that they're going to do, you don't know what they're going to do, you know, mm -hmm. let alone if it's Coltrane or Charlie Parker, whoever it may be, but, you know, right. Latin jazz, whatever kind of it is, young people got to take that. Now, let's talk about the book a little bit, Pops. You know, yeah. I remember when you first told me you were going to do a book. <laughs> Tell me about the book, man. It's, I'm excited. Well, uh, it, it, you know, it was a process of four years in writing, but I got to a point where um, I think I had just come back from a tour or something, and I was home, and uh, it was kind of, uh, the weather was kind of dreary. It was raining, I believe, and I started thinking about my life, you know, where, where, where I am, what I'm doing, where I was, where I've been. You know, um, those kind of things started coming through my mind. I said, you know what, it would, I, I should write about this because mm -hmm. maybe at some point um, my my younger part of, of our family as far as the grandkids and the great grandkids, they probably will not know my story mm -hmm. if it was told to them, but if they could read about it, mm, yeah. then, yeah, then it's there. Yeah, verbally, that story yeah. may change a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, that started it, you know, and I just started writing, and I started writing as, you know, like anybody else, you just start, you know. Once I started, I got into the groove of it, but luckily for me, is that I had kept a journal all these years. Mm -hmm of my travels, mm -hmm. where I was, what I felt like in the years. And so I started looking through all of those, you know, mm -hmm. I kept calendars of where I was, what wow. I left, where I was, where, where I traveled to, who I played with, mm -hmm. who was in the band, wow. when I recorded, mm -hmm. you know, everything. Mm -hmm. So I had all that to go back to and look at. Mm -hmm. Now, the bad part is that I had no really authenticity of my whole my immediate family, as far as my dad, my mm -hmm. grandfather, great grandfather, I had no knowledge of any of that. So, mm -hmm. um, and and I tried to, in a sense, um, put that on paper, but it was kind of hard to do because when you don't know, mm -hmm. you know, about your about your parents and their life mm -hmm. and things like that and where they came from. Um, I could have did some really, really research, mm -hmm. but I thought, well, rather than do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go by what I was told right. as a young kid, yes, sir. you know, mm -hmm. all of that. So, and I thought it made more of an interesting story mm -hmm. because part of it is, is it fiction? <laughs> is it <folklore>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it real? Did my dad really do that? I don't yeah. know. You know? Yeah. So it was cool to, to write about like that and how I felt towards them as a kid, you know, and growing up. And then, of course, you know, how I went to school, how I started, how I met my wife on the, you know, the kids, the, her family. I mean, it's, it just started developing, developing, and I just kept writing and writing and writing. Before I knew it, I said, man, I've got a book here. Yes, you know, this is a book. <laughs> I got a whole thing <laughs> sitting right in front of yeah. me. I got to put this together. Yeah. So we decided uh, my... Um, my daughter-in-law, um, Sarah, who we got together, and uh, um, as I wrote everything down, she made corrections, and um, my other friend, who is a friend of the family, um, Ronnie, he put the book together, designed the cover and everything, and we self-published, and so it's been out about, oh, maybe two months. Right. It's uh, being sold on my on my website, pedescovito.com. You can go on, on my website and order the book. Or if you come to see us play, we have them at our concerts and performances. We sell them there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it, it's going pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm really proud of it because I never thought in my lifetime that I would even write a book. 
mm. because uh, <clears throat> I'm so busy in a sense of with the music business, with my artwork, uh, that how can I take on another project? You know, right, but right. but I did, and now that it's finished, it's it's great. Um, who knows? There might be a volume two. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you squeeze a volume two in there. It's gonna be. I, I I haven't even really got started. I this is the type of book. Just from verbally what we've talked about about the book, you have to be in a quiet place to really soak it up. You can't have no distractions because you, I'm learning things. You know about you I've never known and, mm. and people a lot of people don't know this Pops is like my spiritual father I didn't have a father so when he came into my life at a time uh, I was learning uh, parental love from moms mm. and pops that kind of took me in and, and and it really helped me see what it's supposed to be like so learning this book is like learning a whole <laughs> different element about yeah. Pops yeah. you know so um I'm excited, you know. I'm yeah, excited to yeah. see this book. And people, please, it, it's you got to get this book. Man, yeah. I'm telling you, young musicians, anybody, people, just in general, young musicians. I'm really encouraging you because you you really need to see the sacrifices and the things that, and the journey of music and and everything that plays into yeah. it. Um, yeah, because it's you know that that's one thing about you know the music business. Although it it's so rewarding, especially when you play. People come to see you play, you get the applause. And it's great that you get paid, but it's not, it, it's not in a sense, the money issue. It, it's a sense of being accepted for what you do artistically. Mm -hmm. And so you're putting your heart and soul out there with what you do as a performer. Mm -hmm. So when your audience accepts that, mm -hmm. They accept it and they applaud you. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest feeling in the world. Absolutely. So it's it's a great profession, but at the same time, very difficult profession because you know it's not it's not an easy one. It's right. not an easy. Like a roller coaster. You never... Yeah, it's, it's up and down. Mm -hmm. It'll always be up and down, and you always want to be better than either your last record mm -hmm. or your last performance mm -hmm. or the last time. The last time you even practiced, you want to be better yeah. all the yeah. time. So. It's very demanding, uh, in, a, in a sense you have to be selfish because you're going to spend most of your time trying to learn your craft and doing what you do yeah. so that other things can't distract you. you right. Know? And you have to keep that focus of, you know, yeah, I want to do better, I want, right. to, I want to be better, I want to be, you know, accepted as an artist. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, it can be very difficult. And I think in the book I tell a lot of those ups and downs stories, but mm -hmm. Then, in a sense, as, as I as I finish the book, it comes to, and I can't say the end, but it just comes to a a place where now I think that I am very satisfied to where I am now, what, what I've done, and yeah. what, what I've I've accomplished. Right. You know, so we're gonna get this Grammy next year, though. That's that. That's gonna happen. That's the only one I'm <laughs> <missing. laughs> That's gonna happen. I yeah. like to you, I don't know when, but that's happening. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so so those are the kind of things, you know, that, that the book is about. And, yeah. and the main focus of it is that through all of the ups and downs, through all of the traumas, through all of the disappointments, through all of the, the great times, the you know, everything, that I was able to keep the family intact. And, right. and that's, that's really the whole issue of putting this out. Yeah. As far as the people know that, yeah, you can have a career, but you can also, if you're gonna have a family, you can mm -hmm. you can also have a family. Yeah. And it's so funny you say that. So, <laughs> when you met moms, <laughs> did she know you was a musician? Like, how did that play out? Was she like, <laughs> oh, he's a musician, or like, oh, he was a musician? Like, no, she you... didn't know I was a musician. Really? No, she did not know. She just thought I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, still fine. That's it. That's how you just rolled up on her pops yeah, that yeah. Bay Area swag. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, well, you know, uh, we met at a very young age, you mm -hmm. know, and so uh, you know, getting married early and just just growing up together, mm -hmm. you know, at a young age, you don't know what the <laughs> you're doing, you know, because you guys was really yeah, <laughs> but. 
We've managed to keep uh, the laughter and the love mm -hmm. and the, all of it, you know, our spirituality, everything in, mm -hmm. into our marriage. So, mm -hmm. so it's been great. And anniversary, you know, how many years? Sixty-one. We just made sixty-one 61. years together. That yeah. needs to be the next book. <laughs> That could be. That a, needs to be a book yeah, yeah. that needs to be written because people <laughs> need to understand and marriage is, is work. It's not perfect, but the journey and yeah. every. How do you do it? That's that's always the question people ask. Like, yeah. how do yeah. you do that? Yeah. You know, we can't even make it past a month or three months, yeah. three weeks, like two years. You know yeah. me? I'm like. Yeah. So, yeah, it's and moms is such a unique individual. Like, it to me, it's like. You're the perfect combinations, but totally opposite. Yeah. And we are opposite. <laughs> yeah. We're totally, totally opposite. opposite. Yeah. But but being so opposite makes it work. Mm -hmm. so, and and you know, people always say you guys are like uh Desi and Lucy. Which Absolutely. Is, yeah, which is really true because uh It's the perfect analogy. Yeah, yeah. And and, and as much as she uh, you know, keeps the family together. Mm -hmm. She does it in a very hilarious way. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. it's a non-stop laughing. Right. It's, there's no words. If, if you've been <laughs> around moms, if you guys ever come to see Pops and you see moms, there are a couple of things that's for sure. A, she's going to act like she's known you your whole life. Yep. B, you're going to absolutely get a hug if you talk to her. But see, you're gonna end up laughing at something she says or does. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah, and she will take you in as yeah. one of our own. Abs yes. I am a testament to that. Yes, I'm a testament yeah. of that. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's funny because when I look at like Zena, Sheila, Peter, Michael, and the and their personalities, there are bits and pieces that I see in each one of them. Mm -hmm. With Zena being yeah. like mom's junior to oh, me. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, just yeah. Flat out, just mom's junior, yeah. and then everybody else has a little bit of both of you in them yeah. and stuff. And then, uh, um, I you know I think that the best thing that I've got to see is the family element. Um, yeah. with you guys you know a lot of time people see um celebrities or artists mm -hmm. and what you see on stage is 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 may not always what you may think it may be but pops is pops no matter where he's at and that's one thing you got to know about him he's the same <laughs> funny yeah. lovable person on stage that he is off stage mm -hmm. you know and i think um when you talk about great musicians and great personalities pops you are right there i mean that's why they say legendary pete escovito and, and yeah. it says a lot Thank you. Says a lot. Yeah. Which are, now we got to watch the Astros. We're gonna watch my team, the Astros. <laughs> I know. Bring it home. Yeah, they probably will. <laughs> they're, they're looking great right now. <laughs> they're looking real good. Yeah, that crazy game. Good, yeah. Is there anything that you want to leave with at, as we uh, close this uh, interview out, and you want to share? You know, any last thoughts? Oh boy. Um, well, I think what we've, you know, as a family, what we've tried to send a message to other people uh, how important family is. Mm -hmm. It's so important. And and we spread that love and that joy and let people know that uh, you can't do it alone. You gotta have some kind of spiritual awareness. And, and that's really, really important to us because if, I think if it wasn't for that, um, maybe a lot of us would go different ways, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and whatever you believe in, I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to say believe in this and mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. No, um, but just so you have some spiritual awareness mm -hmm. that, because that, that's where the music comes from. You're, yeah. you're given a gift. Yep. That's it's a it gift. Is. So you take that gift and you appreciate that gift. And mm -hmm. uh, so you, you spread that kind of a thing to other people, mm -hmm. you know, to welcome other people, mm -hmm. to, to love other people, yeah. you know. Um, and that we have to do, you know, because we've got, we're in a place now, I think, of the world is spinning upside down. Mm -hmm. Instead of going around, it's going up and down. I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the love part and friendship part and respecting other people, mm -hmm. not only them, but whatever people have, you know, now, you know, we're just doing some crazy things, you know, and, yeah. and uh, it's mm -hmm. just really really a bad time so you know that's what i'm hoping for that all the listeners out there will you know spread some love and some joy and yeah uh, in the world yeah and, I, and just to really bring that home is 
In the midst of touring and everything, the family, pops and everybody, Sheila, moms, one thing that they always did was give back to the community and a, a serious focus on the young people that were in the system, juvenile hall, foster care, mm -hmm. places like that. I used to call them up like, hey, pops, I'm at this place over here, you know, because I'm not only a musician, but I, I work with young people and whatever we needed, TVs, clothes, whatever it was, they never said no. Mm -hmm. And this is something that, that a lot of musicians need to learn from the uh, Escobedo right. family pops is that you got to give back and you got to show people back. a better way. Yes, got to give back. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, yeah. pops, I appreciate you giving me time, man. I've been trying to nail this interview down with you since <laughs> I've been back to L.A. Right. I love you and I, and I thank you for everything you've love done for you me. Too, I, I appreciate you so oh, much. Man. Uh, it's your boy, Arkeese, Food for Thought Project. We want to thank our sponsor, Yahweh International, Robert, them over there, New Foundation Productions, man. Much love to you guys. And look forward to talking to you guys next time on Arkeese and the Food for Thought Project. Yeah. Um, just a great interview with Pete Escovito, man. I thoroughly enjoyed it. We call him Pops. Man, he has shown me so much about music. I mean, the whole family, Sheila E., Peter Michael, Juan, Mom, Zena, like this family has completely changed my life, man. You have no understanding the depth of love I have for them, man. And just for the fact that just musically watching them has just been a blessing. It completely changed the way I approach music. Uh, as you heard in the interview, uh, I was strictly like a rap rapper, street rapper kind of thing, you know. And uh, once I started seeing them perform live, it changed my life. And from that, the actual album, Arkeese and the Food for Thought Project, Pops played on, played on two songs. I'll probably try to slide one in um, after this little part here. Um, but uh, that's where that comes from, just that whole being around live music. So what I want to do is just express to people, like, we've got to do better musically. And uh, we got to be able to pass on something to our young people. You know, right now, they're not learning anything. They're not sitting under great musicians. You know, um, the music industry as a whole has become very um, social media based. You know, a lot of people that are charting and making money are people who did not love music. They didn't have a, a passion to be musicians, guitar players, drummers, you know, vocalists. This is not what I'm seeing in music currently today. What I'm seeing in music today is there's somebody who's socially media who's popular on YouTube. They, they're famous for all the wrong reasons. And the first thing somebody thinks is, how do we make money off of it? Let's do a single, let's do an album, you know? And, and, and you know, it just kind of throws you back that that's what it's come to. And they find success and or not, but you know, fake hotness based off of these bots they're using to push their numbers up on Facebook and YouTube. And y'all heard me talk about that like a, you know, a long time, but you know, what we got to get back to is teaching our young people real music. And that doesn't mean they're not kids in school right now for music out in Berkeley, School of Music, or all around the United States, but the music industry as a whole does not reward them for that work. You don't see that, you know, unless you're on the live side of it, you know, your rock bands, your jazz groups and stuff. But as a whole, commercial media as a whole, when they just look who they look who they're going to, to express musicianship you know and unfortunately what young people are so into with social media that's what they're using and it's really heartbreaking to see that so uh what i'm going to do right now is uh, again thank yahweh international uh, robert Nim over there at new foundation productions i'm going to play one or two songs from the arkeese food for thought project i may have played them before but you might not have known that juan and pete escovito played on these tracks so we're going to give a pause for the cause and, and i plan on doing a re-release of this show I'm waiting to get a licensing agreement for um, to play his last album on uh, Sheila E's label. And if that all works out, you know, we'll be playing some of his music. But for now, here is Arquise and the Food Thought Project featuring Pete Escovito and Juan Escovito uh, playing on percussion. Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> settle down, settle down. All right. Now, y'all don't mind if I bring Pete Escovito up here, do you? And Juan Escobedo, come on, give him a round of applause. Yes, sir. They're going to add a little seasoning to this next track. And this next one's called Late Night Tip. And it goes with something. Let's get to the late night tip. On the late night tip. On the late night tip. Let's get together on the late night tip. On the late night tip. 
chill. Yeah, the late night chill. Yeah, yo, let's get together on the late night chill. I'm getting kinda thirsty, so I think I'll take a sip. Hey, Jazzy girl, with your Jazzy kinda eyes. Let's get together and get some Jazzy vibes. You can grab your sacks and I can grab my sticks. You can take the lead as the beat comes in the mix. Ah, and as she plays, she floated off the ground. Moving on the level with a whole nother sound. And that's when I knew that it had to be on. Cause I was rocking the door and the sun was gone. She took me to a place that I never ever seen. I had to pitch myself because I thought it was a dream. Come on. In the days I was tripping off the way this jazzy sister played Cause every note she hit went straight to my heart Straight to my heart as my clothes fell apart I was feeling so good that I had to grab the mic I had to grab the mic so I could serve her up right She up had a taste of this, she had a taste of that And it was all good for the boom bap to bap And all through the night we played on and on We had to rock the beat until the break of break of time Cause that's how it is when the music tastes like I'm glad we got together for the late night Come on, let's get on the late night tip, on the late night tip. While we got so deep, it went straight through my hands and then a tip with my feet. And then I loaded on the collar, took a look at the man. I had to look twice cause he was jazzing with his band. And that's when I knew I was in the right place. We packed up our beats and we left the rap race. Straight to the altar as the cool cast scene. My jazz kind of white with the hip hop swing. Yeah. On the late night tip, on the late night tip.
Yeah, and that was Late Night Tip off of the Arquise and Food for Thought album. And uh, man, it was a blessing to be able to work with Pops and Juan. Um, just, you should have heard the songs before they ever even played. Just their flavor just takes a song to a whole nother level. It really does. And uh, just a, just seeing them work, man, just makes everybody better. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't even know what more to say. I mean, you... you if you don't know Pete Escovito's music, you need to go online, iTunes, Google Play, every other media platform, and just type in Pete Escovito and listen to his music. Um, you also need to look for his webpage, PeteEscovito.com, and uh, he has a new book out. He has art. I mean, Pops, what does he not do? This dude is 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 so talented, and uh, all the kids just got all these gifts. So definitely check him out start getting his mu music his catalog is pretty large you need to go back and listen to some of the great stuff he's done and uh you will be quite amazed um it's your boy keese and i just appreciate the time you guys have spent with me just sitting back and uh, enjoying this interview and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys next time and uh, we're gonna have another talk talk about the homeless uh i'm gonna keep working that one i gotta get people to really see what's going on in the united states of america with this um, sanctuary cities and then how it's affecting the homeless. All right, it's your boy Keith. I'm out. You guys have a good one. Thank you so much. Bye.